But yes, they, they've pretty much cemented their spot as first place in Group B of the ESL Premiership. Other teams are going to look at that and other teams are going to immediately see th that as a huge weakness. Yeah, and they sh highlighted pretty effectively that they can't play against Garner. Like, they just, they don't know because you could see that they're trying to push out in the top lane. They didn't have pressure elsewhere on the map, which meant that it was just a free and easy place for Adorno to go to and pick up that kill. So they definitely have a lot to go back and look at in VODs and look at and go, okay, this is why we aren't playing as cohesively here. This is why Hyperion were able to get and keep up to with us for such a long period of time when they realistically shouldn't have. But we'll have to see what happens as we're going to be actually going into XL Esports versus Eminem Gaming. Yes, we are into picks and bans. You see Cassiopeia taken away, Zaya taken away, Galio again taken away by the red side, along with the Rise. They're kind of like two staple bans you have to get away from. And something that, someone I want to watch during this game as we come into it is Krumel. Krumel has been a, cha a person who we've all said is like the mid laner on XL. We got to watch him. We got to see how he's doing. And he, he hasn't stepped up to the plate, in my opinion. And that's no, that's no flame on him whatsoever. It's just he doesn't seem to do what he needs to do sometimes and, and it does really kind of you know put to a point of like better mid laners have dismantled him he needs to start stepping up he needs to be you know part of the team not just a dead weight especially when you're looking at how much time taxer spends in and around his lane as well like his jungle proximity to Krummel is incredibly high right now and he should be able to do a lot more you can see when Taxer in their last game where he was actually able to get in and influence the lane as the Kazakhs got Krummel's victor very far ahead and Krummel could then do what he was supposed to but it is really a case of can Taxer really be a get the ganks off get that pressure down so then he's able to carry the game at the later stages of the game on whatever champion that he's been given but it's it is going to come down to if he can. And uh, Sejuani is definitely champion that they're able to do so with and something that can open up the map quite a bit for them. But it's going to be a case of can they find something on Tivity? Now, see what they go for. Tivity is going to be playing that Azir. The Zac locked in as well. You do not want to go into this second rotation of bands having lost one of the junglers and then get another two banned against you. It can just leave you in such a horrible hole. Not a fun time for anybody, but prioritizing the Sejuani over the Zac, it's kind of a, a tit for tat at this stage. Skarner being number one means he's always first picked, but XL. They kind of got what they wanted from this. We've seen them play Sejuani a couple of times. Actually, Taxer normally does play the Zac. He's very, very good on it. But he's not exactly unfamiliar with the Sejuani. I don't think he'd be too afraid of this coming into this match. No, I agree with you. I think they'll be happy enough with... But I think both sides are going to be happy enough with what they've picked up for themselves this time around. And looking at this last pick coming through for Excel Esports here as well... I think you'd be looking at either, I was going to say solidify the bot lane or maybe pick up a virus for yourself, but they have decided to lock in the Talia for themselves with the Rise and the Cassiopeia gone. That's kind of been left as the last, one of the top tier picks anyway, um, and with the Galio of course gone as well. So this is going to be the roaming play coming through from Kumo. So this is where we were talking about this slightly already, Taxir getting this Talia ahead and then letting him roam around the map with that Weaver's Wall and working in tandem between the two of them. But this is remains to be seen if they will be able to. Caitlyn is actually a pretty surprising pick here because there is still a lot of AD carries on the board. Um, and particularly, that, I was going to say... That are Tavares about is, to get yeah. banned. <laughs> yeah, but they're still like... The likes of the Tristana is still there. Um, the Barris was there. And prioritizing Caitlyn so heavily is actually interesting because in a lot of situations... Other champions can just carry the game better than Caitlyn right now. Yes, she is good, don't get me wrong, but she's still not at the upper echelon uh, when you look at the AD carry position. So I mean, I, it's interesting to see them take Caitlyn, but it also means that they know they're very heavy all in on this late game damage. With the Azir and the Caitlyn, very heavy on this siege potential as well. And this means that Excel can then start to tend more towards a lot of... Um, anti-siege potential that can come through you've already got the Sejuani there you've got the Weaver's Wall with the Tilly as well which can split up these teams in a lot of scenarios as well so it means that even if they start to opt towards a strong split pusher in the top lane as well this could actually be a major issue for them we're seeing as well now a lot of the bands coming through as well the Tam Kench is again just something that'll stop 
the I actually would have preferred rather than the Morgana ban, just get rid of something like the Tarek and the Janna or the Tam as well, just because this is what Eminem are going to be playing towards is this siege potential with the disengage to make sure that they're safe and the Tarek just allows them that if anyone does engage, throw down that ultimate straight away and you're going to be safe as safe can be. But we'll have to see if they're able to play around it. Tristana is going to be locked in and Sendo has found good answers for himself on this Ergot pick. So we'll have to see if he is going to lock that in. We'll be blind as well. There hasn't really been much taken off the board yet either. So Eminem still have a lot to play with. Yeah, I don't think you can really go into a matchup with the lack of top lane bans going with an Urgot. just seems a little bit too risky. But Eminem, they've got themselves a fairly decent team fighting comp right now. Could go with the ga Gangplank. We are, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, on 8.4. Yeah, I was going to say, he got heavily hit in 8.4. And not to anyone's surprise, because he is stupidly broken before that. He was just so, <laughs> pick him blind, doesn't matter. Pick him into a Shin counter, Shin, doesn't you? matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it was it was one of those moments, but I'm glad to see them go with the Nar. I was actually going to say, it's like I would love to see them take something that can still bully the Shen and deal with the Shen, but at the same time, have a bit more of a presence. The Nar is a much safer pick. It's a much stronger pick in this current meta, and I'm glad to see it come back out here for Eminem. Yeah, it's it's going to be a, interesting to see what way Only Angel decides to build this Nar. There's kind of two different ways you can do it, which is where you go heavy on the split push going up against Sendo, or else you can start to, after that second item, tend more towards the team fight where you can pick up the likes of, you know, the randomins and stuff so you can survive the damage that Venzer is going to be putting out. I would say that's the build he will go with in this scenario. He'll want to join his team around a lot of these uh, siege potential, like siege scenarios where he's going to be flinging in the boomerang a lot alongside Caitlyn setting up the traps. It just gives a lot more of a sturdy front line for Eminem as they start to set up these scenarios. But we're going to have to see if they actually are able to because Excel are going to be looking to shut that, that down super early. Particularly when you're looking at Tristani who can start to pick up a lot of kills very quickly and jump around these team fights. If they're able to get her rolling using that Talia and of course using that Sejuani from the jungle as well, it could end up putting them in a very good position and Excel could dominate this game. They could, and it's all kind of ups and downs, but I want to know which XL is going to show up right now, because we saw Diablos versus XL there on Sunday, and XL just didn't really know what to do. There was some very poor decision-making, and there was some very questionable things happening towards their mid-game, and it just didn't quite make sense. However, we have seen XL with a massive ceiling. We have seen them do absolutely crazy things and really push the other teams to the limit. I just want to know which one's going to come out today. Well, they have a lot of comfort picks coming through, and we've seen them on pretty much all of these champions, apart from the Shen, I'm going to say throughout this tournament so th this this is shouldn't be something new that they're bringing to the table it should only be working on what they've been building up throughout this split already so i think they're in a good spot at the moment to really take it and see what they can work with but it is going to be a lot of pressure on this early stage of the game taxer will have his work cut out for him to make sure that he can try and get this snowball going because Talia just won't match up against the Zier in the late game and Caitlyn and Tristan are pretty much in a similar boat in a lot of respects as we get towards these late game fights so it is going to be Taxer uh, who has to get Crummel going make sure he can get his Weaver's Wall down and if they're shut down whatsoever it's going to be so easy for Eminem to just wait until those later stages of the game particularly when they start to hit that three items by Caitlyn's picked up those two Zeal items Azir has got those items under his belt as well and then you've got Anar as well who's got the Black Cleaver the Frozen Mallet a little bit of tankiness in there and that'll become a very strong very scary team fighting composition that comes through We'll have to wait and see, and we can hear it in the background. We haven't quite seen the game just yet. We know it's there. We know it's there. It's, it's there so close. Is there is, there is a game, game. but <laughs> I, I, I just genuinely hope, because if both these teams, given how well they've both proven they can play, if both of them are able to come out of this game, out of, out of these kind of, you know, um, out of the, out of the out of here swinging as such and really show us that they're all here playing at 100% this could be a fantastic game this could be game of the week game of the tournament if both these teams actually play at their highest unfortunately for both of these teams consistency is definitely something they're both lacking and this is the thing i'm pretty sure as well that if excel lose here and raise your governors win 
Well, then it comes down to the game next week to see who's actually going to take the second place in their group because they're actually incredibly close right now. So this is actually one that Razor Gunners are going to be looking at incredibly closely to make sure that if they can pull out a win later on today as well, this could turn the entire split on its head. It well could, and we'll have to see how this all kind of, you know, develops for both sides. And, you know, Eminem, they're still pushing hard in Group B. They are still only one win away from an enclave for that third place spot and it's really a tight tight race but we'll have to see how they come into this and how strong they're able to make that case for themselves but ladies and gentlemen we are finally on the riff for game two of the esl premiership week five spring season 2018 it is excel on the blue side with eminem on the red we'll have to we'll hope if you're an xl fan that they have figured out what they did wrong from uh from sunday and definitely don't want to pick up a loss streak one loss every now and again that's fine you don't want it to make it a habit no most certainly don't especially when you're up against the likes of eminem who haven't had the strongest time around this uh, sorry in the tournament you this is a team that excel are expected to beat but it is going to be a case of if they can actually pull it out of the bag and just looking at the composition it is relying heavily on excel's macro play in the early stages of the game and as you were saying, it's a, it is a case of who shows up. And I'm, ho I'm hoping that we will have a good game here. But Excel have put question marks into my mind at this stage as to what they're actually capable of pulling off if they're not on a good day. Yeah, Eminem as well. Both sides definitely have a lot to prove here. Eminem desperately looking to try and keep that, you know, hopes of qualifying into the playoffs alive. They're in a very, very tough group along with Enclave, who will be playing later on today. That will be very important towards our standings as we are... I think we're within the last week now. We're actually coming up yeah, to... Yeah. This is week five, week six. Yeah, we've only got, yeah. after this week, a one more week of play. And that will be it for these teams for the season. So, if you're going to pick up points, it's got to be now. And that's why I was saying that Razor Governors would be so happy looking at the, the way this draft has gone for Eminem. Because none of the pressure is on Eminem right now to actually make a play. They are quite happy to sit in this laning phase for as long as they want. Azir scales up nicely. He can sit here and just continue to make sure that he's getting the items under his belt. Caitlyn as well can just continue to harass Venzer down, particularly when you've got that melee support with you. There's not really much of an answer for them in the early stages of the game. And if this laning phase continues, she can work up quite happily towards that Infinity Edge and the start of that Zeal item as well. And then, of course, Nars too, will be working up towards that Black Cleaver, which is going to be great against Sendo in these split push scenarios. So everything is on XL right now to be the ones making the plays. Eminem can put up their feet, kick back, relax, and just let the CS come to them. See how they develop this, and we already see Jokerism trying to establish dominance in this lane. Should have the early advantage being a Caitlyn and a Tarek versus a Tristana Braum. Duel, though, on his legendary Braum very very comfortable on that champion something he is very well versed in inside and out shouldn't be feeling any kind of pressure whatsoever and it's just it's just nice to see you know kind of standard league of legends at the start until it all collapses upon itself and we really don't know what's going on <laughs> are you just saying i like the first minute and a half because nothing weird happens literally it's all like, goes it's like, i i like the way we have predictions and those predictions happen and then after like about 10 minutes it's anyone's guess <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just it's it's as we said though like these teams can just turn on a dime they can be 100 percent fantastic or they can be you know twitch fail worthy but we'll have to wait and see how <laughs> both sides you know kind of push into this as you know as much as we are ta talking up you know xl not having a good consistency they are still a very very strong side with very very good backroom house staff that you know really can you know be the difference in these kind of tournaments they've got their new gaming house set up they look like they're really going to make a push for the erc and so many different things they're going to be after this tournament as well like you know the, the, the sky is the limit but I, again, as you know, it is something that we we're, we put high expectations on them because of this, and that's why we want to see them do it as well as they should. Yeah, and I think they've been the most consistent where they have a very clear game plan, and I think with the composition that they drafted, they do. But I'm just waiting to see if they're actually going to execute on it. 
Um, because right now you can see Sejuani has got in, she's got a little bit of counter jungling done, but hasn't really been looking to get much vision control in the enemy jungle. You can see she's still sitting on that ward, didn't place one where she went for the invade either, and um, has gone for the back, but it's a it's a defensive ward that she's placed as well. So across the board already, we can see that Excel are not looking to make these early plays. So I'm looking, maybe they are going to wait until that level six point, until the Sand United and the Weaver's Wall are available, and just everyone pile dive on mid lane but we'll have to see if that is going to be what they're playing with but right now it's already looking like it's going to be a passive start from it you say a passive start but we see already a bit of a pinch coming in on the mini map into the mid lane a lot of pings going down they're trying to bait in Tivity. throws flash away but he gets caught with the cleanse has got him away just about will he go down yes he will Cremel getting himself the first blood xl have the advantage yeah, well played from Excel, although you can see a little bit of cracks in the communication there where one went forward, one went back, but it doesn't matter. They succeed in taking down Timothy. First kill over to Crummel, and that is exactly the member of Excel they want that kill onto. If they can get the, her snowballing, make sure that they can get her then into the bottom lane to influence the map even more, it's going to be fantastic for them. So good play from them and executing well on the game plan. He talked about the you know, the game plan coming into this from XL. It had to be get Cremel going, and that's exactly what they're looking to do. They're looking to keep the advantage in that mid lane, use him then and the Shen as their global advantage. As they know they've got the, you know, the Stan United, they've got the Weaver's Wall, they've got so many ways of just, you know, finding a 5v3 if they even decide to go for it. So definitely the advantage they were looking for very early on in this game. And both summoners now down on Tivity, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, that will most certainly hurt, particularly when we're looking towards level 6, about to be hit by Taxer as well. A repeat visit could most certainly be on the cards, and it's an easy setup for him as well when Crummel, I sorry, for Crummel, if Taxer can land that ultimate, he can pop him back out, but they're actually looking for the fight in mid lane. No flash or heal now on Crummel, but the Sejuani is on the backside. The let's bounce gonna be used, nicely done to bring Taxer into the fray. A lot of time is going down. Neither jungler nor mid lane are going down, though. A couple of summoners burned. I say a couple. Only the heal there from Kremel. And advantage a little bit over 10 and M, but they had to expend quite a lot of time and quite a lot of pressure there just to kind of equal out those summoners. Yeah, and it's a lot used in the ultimate department for them as well. With that Zack ultimate down, it means that his ganks are a little bit less ferocious, particularly when you're looking at Tristana who can jump away, Braum who can jump away, Shen who can hop away as well. And Crummel is now going to be on a pretty much the defensive since he now has that heal burnt as well. So it's actually quite favorable for Excel to get those um, ultimates out and not be at a loss or a deficit due to we see it's about a 700 gold lead coming up to about seven and a half minutes or a little over and m and m they don't want to make this a habit they don't want to keep feeding off summoners or keep feeding off advantages and you can see where the vision control lies is very much top side belongs to uh especially in that river anyway belongs to the side of xl whereas bot side is very much in control of the river on m and m's side and Kamel. He has got the blue buff now, has got the Weaver's Wall. I want to know if he looks for a play with the Stan United. That's the vision control that Eminem needs to try and stop exactly that play happening from Crummel. If they have all that vision control there, they can spot out Talia the second she walks down like she's doing now. And the bot lane pinged out instantly back up. You can see how defensive they're now playing. And this is where you want to see Taxer going in and making sure that he can clear all this vision. He's sitting on a control ward, so should be able to get control back of his own jungle but it just means that it's much more difficult for excel to make that play you can see eminem are aware that this is how the game plan from excel is going to work this is where they want to exert the pressure but they're not letting them get much yeah not gonna allow that to happen like we said you know double globals especially this early on in the game can be fatal if you are caught out by them and as i say that only Angel. He's going to have a little bit of a rough time in this lane, but he should be able to do just fine once he gets himself his Black Cleaver. Yeah, he should be fine, but you can see Sendo is putting the pressure down, landing several of those taunts means that he's able to trade pretty effectively. And this is the thing now, though. Has that Tiamat completed, he can shove in the wave now and won't miss out on as much uh, when he's able to get that Sand United off. We'll be looking towards that bot lane with the wave pushed in. He's moving into a position where he can go for the fight. Crumble's in position for the Weaver's Wall as well. We might see something happen. 
Well, and it looks like they're baiting it in because he had full vision on top of him. There's the Staten United onto that mid lane. Scudzi is just not going to be able to keep himself alive. He will go into cell division, but only for so long. And there's all five people in the mid lane. What do they give up for it, though? They gain a kill. Do they gain anything else? I don't really think so, but I don't think Eminem can make anything happen either. Yeah, Eminem are backing, which means they're going for the Drake. No bottom lane, no mid, or no jungler, means that they're going to be completely safe to go for this. And right now, you can see Excel are putting the pressure down in the early stages of the game, which is exactly what they want to be doing. So well played from Venzer, from Duel, from Sendo to get into that mid lane alongside Taxer. And I, I did guess where that was going to be the five man fall dive, but I just got the lane wrong, so... Excel are definitely putting the pressure down on this one. Yeah, and slow, methodical. This is the Excel we know. They know that they have to make their advantages work while at the same time not giving over win conditions to the enemy team. And that is exactly what they're doing right now. Only Angel putting pressure onto Sendo. Does not want him to have a fun time as he did leave that lane. Zack is coming up as well. So we might see Kremel and Sejuani roam up. This could be a 3v2. No teleport available from anyone else on the side of Eminem. They are pinging out, though, that something might be going down, though. So you don't think that many things will be happening right now, just purely because of how tentative both these sides are. Yeah, the second they le see Talia leave lane, they put a halt to that play, making sure that they're not going to give anything across. They know that Sejuan is going to be coming from base as well. So they're pretty certain that she's going to be arriving at some point in time. Taxi will be picking up this lane wave for himself as well, which is going to be great because he was actually slightly behind on experience compared to Scudzi because he'd been putting down so much damage, or sorry, so much pressure in the early stage of the game. So he'll be happy to pick up a little bit more experience and get that Sejuani back in track alongside Scudzi. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that all comes about. But at the moment, Eminem definitely feeling a little bit of pressure. Need to start finding themselves an advantage somewhere. Otherwise, it just will not work out for them in this game. They will just die a, a, a game of a thousand cuts if it does end up going that way. As we come up to 11, 11 minutes, 50 seconds. So, not the worst time in the world to be looking for a mid-game, Caitlyn. She needs to do get her double crit items to stop that lull. But we're not really seeing that lull happen as much anymore. People seem to have forgotten that Caitlyn does have a... Oh, as I say that, though. Oh, this could be Kremel in a very bad situation. Shifting sands, flashing away. There's the flash in now. Tivity going to take a lot of damage. Has not got flash or his shifting sands available. Scudzy not able to repeat. And Kremel and Taxer, like we talked about, just looking so, so good. Just comboing so well. Yeah, this is something that we've seen time and time again from this pair. Consistently putting the pressure down, working so well in tandem. Whether it's Galio, Zach, Talia, Sejuani, they are a force to be reckoned with. And this is where Excel are now putting all the pressure down. This is actually, as I say that as well, they're looking up towards this top side of the map as well. I'm just going to steal away the red buff, but there's a very vulnerable Nar in that top side. Or we've yet to see this Talia use the Weaver's Wall. Yeah, we have yet to see that Reaver's Wall actually put into effect. It's 1,500 gold in favor of XL. Kremel with all three kills. This is just perfect positioning here for XL. They don't need to do anything else. They have the global advantage. They got the first strike, which was a mountain of all strikes to be given away as well. They will have the advantages pretty much everywhere. And Eminem, they've got to find a little bit of confidence somewhere. They've got to find out because that was them engaging. That was them looking to be proactive. And the shifting, the, the Emperor's Divide just kind of kept Scudzi away from putting down any extra CC, and it really didn't help him out. No, he certainly did not. And this is now running the risk of Excel running away with this game. They have complete control of the river for vision control, now picking up the both scuttle crabs for themselves, which means it's now impossible for Scudzi to try and get in and really be a nuisance for these laners. Sendo is quite happy to continue to farm up, although he is taking a little bit of damage on this top lane turret, but that's really not their focus right now. Sendo's job is just to hold for as long as possible and let the other members of the team put in the work. He's more there in a supportive, defensive position. But 
when they they do decide to turn it on excel can use him and the offensive as we can see sejuani is pushing in again towards this mid lane and you've got to be frustrated as tivity right now as you never seem to be able to find a 1v1 in this game yeah doesn't need to find one for himself but at the same time doesn't seem to be able to capitalize on a 1v2 either so all's fair in love and war you know if you bring your jungler in they're allowed to bring theirs it is, it is <laughs> a, after all you know a team gentleman's game dispute, a, yeah. gentle, a gentleman's <laughs> dispute <laughs> that's how we're calling it you know nothing better than your mid laner possibly going mad at you for your uh for feeding the the enemy mid laner three kills but <laughs> We see only Angel going in now onto Sendo. Going to use the ultimate. Now they're going to combo a lot of different things here. Sendo forced to flash. Nice combo there. Now he's a little bit less kind of comfortable, if you want to call it that. But knowing that Scudsy is topside, that's the go sign for the rest of XL. They're looking for bot lane, but the immediately you see Eminem's bot lane back the hell up. Yeah, but they will be able to get the turret then if that's the case. Only Angel does only have a little bit of damage left on this top lane, but with Zach leaving the, himself, or sorry, leaving him by himself, he's not going to be able to push on towards that turret, which means the first one is going to fall in favor of Excel. We're saying how much pressure that this Caitlyn could put down onto Tristana if she was allowed to be left alone, but that has not been the case so far. Excel have been playing stellar and making sure that they're able to continue pushing forward. They will find multiple members of Eminem in the top lane, though. Yeah, we are here. 60 minutes bang on the clock, and we actually see Scudzi back the hell out immediately. They get their turret. They back away, dragging up in 20 seconds or a little less. And you'd imagine both sides want to try and reset for that. I am not exactly sure exactly what straight, which Drake it is yet. Uh, if it is a cloud, I doubt anyone will go for it because they're useless. <laughs> well, they're not useless, <laughs> but they're, they they do far too hey, much they damage. Try. For they try. They, they, they try. It is a cloud, Drake. God damn it. I was wondering why everyone was topside. <laughs> but it is it is one of those things. Cloud Drake does so much damage so quickly for what it actually gives you as a buff. I would justify that amount of damage for like, El or not Elder, excuse me, uh, Infernal or like Mountain. I would not justify it for that kind of a Drake. It's just too, too much damage. Speaking of members on the bottom side of the map, though, as it is going to give Excel pressure onto the Rift Herald, but it's also going to stick Sendo in an even worse scenario. He's already been struggling against this Nar, and now he's finding himself in a very long lane with the with the wave pushed in towards the Nar. If this Nar decides to freeze this right now, this is going to stick Sendo so far behind. I would would be surprised though. I say he wants to continue to shove in, see if only Angel can pick up this turret, but it does mean Sendo is in a little bit of trouble as this is not the lane that he wants to be in. He'd much rather have the shorter lane where he's able to stick underneath his turret, but we can all wish for it, but it's not always going to be the case for they want it, whereas Eminem are wanting to keep this top lane turret alive. Yeah, Sendo forced to go back. TP is available for only Angel, as well as Sendo and that Stan United, so realistically, if both top laners do end up going up to that top side, only Sendo has a way back down, so definitely the more annoying thing of dealing with the Shen, I suppose, but Again, like you said, a lot of XL trying to push into this, you know, top side. Make sure they get the advantages that they need. It's going to be so difficult for the side of Eminem to really hold this. I'm so surprised XL haven't used this Talia, though, because the Weaver's Wall has been available for so long, and they haven't done anything. But actually, as I say that, Sendo going through the trade in the bottom side. She's going to be the Nar. See if he can put some damage down. Yeah, nothing too crazy, but again, XL got Taxer in this top side. Kramel pushing up, knowing that he is now uh, completely free of vision. They're trying to keep this wave away from the tower. That tower taking down to probably about a below at eighth. Only Angel just trying to be a little bit of a nuisance there to Sendo. Push him back constantly, make sure he's kept in check. This is only a matter of time that this top lane turret goes down. And no vision in that jungle either. Trivity, he might be ganked again. You see Sejuani off on that backside. He needs to be so careful. Yeah, Krumal is back in though. So might be able to shove in this way. Sorry, in this lane. He's tending towards the bottom side as he knows that Sejuani is up on that top side of the map. So should be quite easily able to escape if the need arises. But we'll be looking to shove in one more wave before he tries and backs himself. Has that cleanse available too. So it should be relatively fine to stay here at the moment oh, no. this is kind of like 
this is actually playing into Eminem's favor though. Excel haven't been able to find much since they picked up those kills onto Tibbity and picked up a few of these terrors. And this is just delaying further and further the pressure that they want to put down. As I say that though, Taxer is making his name known in the top side, which means that we'll finally secure this top lane turret. But it's been a long time in the making. It's been a very long time in the making. Only Angel actually touches out the uh, the little bit of taunt damage that would have been able to put him under the turret as a lot more free time now onto this bot, li bot lane. And it's just becoming more and more difficult for the side of Eminem to keep what they have going, to keep what they want to have in this game. And coming up to, you know, 1950, just under 20 minutes and... This is kind of slowly but surely becoming XL's game. Like you said, it will just be... A, now we're seeing the Weavers well finally come in. It might be a little bit too late, though. Only Angel out of mega form. Where was that ultimate going to, Taxer? What was that? Who was that to? That was just... What? I, I don't even know. I don't even know where that one went there. It was a complete miss throw. And they lose two ultimates and they lose pressure now in mid lane. Yeah, they lose pressure completely in the mid lane, which means that Eminem are going to be free to start shoving this in. It's still pretty healthy, though, so might be able to take it down on this one. And a very strange trap line as well. It means that they can't really put much pressure down. No, they can't put a huge amount down, unfortunately. Camellius getting a huge amount of damage onto him means that he's forced to back away, heal himself up. As I say that, though, the rest of XL have now joined the fray. They want to look for a great two-man taunt there, and Camellius going to die immediately. Nothing he can do. XL just one bad play into another great play. There's no need for Eminem to be pushed up that far. They have got Rifty now into this mid lane. They're going to be able to take up a turret, if not more. Yeah, they should be able to find this. Oh, as I say that, though, the Zier goes down straight away. There's the Let's Bounce. Going to pick up four people. But why would you bother bring them closer to the Caitlyn? There's going to be another kill going down. That's going to be four overall in this play. They still have Rift Herald 21 minutes in, and they're just decimating Eminem. Yeah, they are tearing through Eminem right now and tearing through these structures as well. This is going to be a, the Inhib turret going down in favor of Excel. They are going to stick around, I think. No, they're backing up. They're not going to be going for this at all. But as we look at that, the bot lane turret has fallen, but XL would be perfectly fine with that. Such a strange interaction there. Scudzy, I... I... Again, no flame, but you got to call out people. His decision-making so far this game has been a radical. It has just not been what Eminem have needed, and there's been such weird mismatches of, oh, I'm going to bring them all back. Like, yes, fair enough, use the less bounce, but don't bring them straight into your Caitlyn. That's four people. You're just If it was one person, you could justify it, but four is just a little bit too much for that Caitlyn to deal with. Yeah, yeah, completely. And you can see now that they are starting to run away. This Talia 4-0-3. Kermel is having a fantastic game and we were talking about already just set up so well by Taxer and this is really the way that you want to try and shut XL down if you're ever against them is make sure that Taxer can't have the impact that he wants in the mid lane and a lot of XL's plays just go tonight but he has found the success he has found the kills and has now found himself a blue buff as well so he'll be looking to start pushing towards Eminem and really solidify and just shut down the remainder of this game 100% kill participation, Kremel. We said he had to, you know, had to step up. He definitely has in this game, but I definitely feel a couple of things. The uh, XL coaches, Bar Baronetto, will be watching this game and just kind of, uh, you know, this, 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 there's definitely been some missteps on the old ultimate engage side, but Eminem have definitely gifted a hell of a lot more over to this XL lineup. And XL, like... We're actually going to see a, another good Weaver as well. Going to cut off everybody from that top side. That's going to be a tier 2 going down. No butter whatsoever. No way Eminem can really contest that. But Eminem, they, you can't give those kind of things over to a side like XL. This may work. You know, those little mistakes may work for you or may not crush you as such in against other teams. But XL... They're a team that, like, you know, during the start of the season, everyone expected... They're the reigning champions. Everyone expects them to come back and really come in hard. They've had a rough start, but Eminem are just gifting them opportunity after up after opportunity. Yeah, and now they're out of position as well. Azir is trying to steal away the Raptors, which means that Excel are able to clear out all the vision that Eminem had around this Baron pit. So questionable decisions continuing to come from Eminem. 
<laughs> Raptors are great, but they're not worth losing everything around the park. No, Baron is going to be started up. Not perfect vision control now in favor of XL. This could be a little bit of a move. As I say that, though, they jump immediately onto Jokerism. Good enough vision for him to get caught out just straight up there. Will stop the Baron, but it will mean another kill going over to the to the XL team. Ascendo just try to keep Oni Angel, and this is actually perfectly fine for uh, Oni. Uh, sorry, for Ascendo because Oni Angel's ultimate is so huge for Eminem that he's not able to put it out at all. No, hasn't been able to do much in this bottom lane against the Shen, so they're going to be quite happy to go for that. But it has been able to force Excel back away from this Baron. So Eminem hold for the moment. Everyone kind of resetting now at the moment. But looking at the items that are now coming through, you can see Tristana has picked up her rapid fire cannon and her other zeal item as well. The static shiv, which means she's going to be able to put down a heap of damage in these team fights, which is not going to spell good news bears for the side of Eminem. Now support Tristana along with her support Braum. And two of them have done very, very well. You see, it's totally been dominated so far this game by the likes of the solo laners. Camellius forced to flash away. No vision. Re Actually, a lie. He had vision. He just went far too forward. He tunnel vision as such. And it's just not looking good right now for the side of Eminem. They need a miracle. They don't even just need a misplay. They need a couple of misplays. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to be able to find it, though. Excel, you kind of need vision control to capitalize on them. And right now, Excel are just shutting that down completely. And as I say that, it looks like they're about to take the fight. Yeah, they look for Scudzi, and that's going to be the ultimate onto the Caitlyn. Camellius just not quick enough with the Tarek ultimate. Two kills there. Venzer picks up his first of the game. And honestly, XL, they're in so much good space right now. They could honestly look to maybe go for Baron after this. Yeah, they're not going to lose too much again. Getting inhibitor, getting two kills, losing an outer bottom tier two. It's it's not, oh sorry, not an outer, an inner uh, bottom tier, uh, tier turret. It's just not going to phase them at all no it really isn't um yeah tier two is gone only angel can continue to shove down there but they've lost the inhib they're losing the baron i i was kind of hoping that eminem wouldn't really roll over as much as they had they have a good team fighting composition if they can just find it because when you look it's realistically just the ultimate from oh. taxer that could be the guarantee oh activity Activity though, gets one kill, gets killed off himself, Scudzi off of the backside, only Angel now searching for kills, but you still have that explosive shot from the Tristana, not a lot they can do, they gain one, lose two, but more importantly for XL, they gain the Baron. Yeah, they most certainly do, but yeah, I like Eminem, I'm looking at what XL have to offer here. It's tax or is there engaged with that Sejuani units. Yet I've not seen a QSS anywhere on Eminem right now. I mean, if you can just shut that down, Jokerism doesn't die in the previous fight. He's able to get away from that. And then you can take that fight. You have only Angel TP in at that stage. He had the Mega Nair up. And maybe you can look to make something happen, particularly in these small jungle environments where it suits the lights of Nair because he's got a million and one walls that he can wallop you against. You've got the Camellias coming through with the Tarak Ultimate as well, which is great when you're all grouped up like that. But time and time again, we're seeing that they're not opting to make these plays. They're not opting to play safe or even try and make something happen instead they're just letting xl tear through yeah it is only an 8,000 gold lead but it feels so much bigger right now this has got to be the last stitch engage coming out from scudzi he goes in but he has absolutely no follow-up venzer picks up his third kill of the game there's a turret ni nicely moved into a Sejuani ultimate. Caitlyn falls down as well. Three for none. They're still pushing in. There's just nothing the side of Eminem can do. And this has just been an absolute flooring. XL showing their dominance as they look to try and pick up the Nexus turret and end this game. Yeah, and Eminem just allowing them as well. Scudzi goes in ahead of only Angel even making it to that team fight. So any hope of having a fight where they can take something or they can work together before the Shen arrives is not going to happen. It's going to be Eminem swiftly falling to XL. XL demolishing.